I'm Kate from CrateInsider.com, and Hendron Racing Engines just released their 604 recommendations for 2018. Now, all of these items will apply directly to dirt late models, although um, most of them will also apply to anyone who's running a 604 crate engine. So let's go ahead and get started with your ignition timing. Hendron recommends running 34 degrees of engine timing set at 4,000 RPM with a locked out distributor. They've found that you will lose significant power when timed above 34 degrees. Next up with your ignition system, we're gonna talk about mag pickup wires. You wanna run your mag pickup wires separately from any other wires. And it's very critical because the mag pickup only takes milliamps to fire. And any other source of amperage can and will induction fire your mag pickup in your distributor. So make sure the entire length of the mag pickup wires are run completely separately and that they do not cross over any other source of amperage. And a distance of one inch from any other source is is acceptable. Now with spark plug wires, these are often overlooked when it comes to getting maximum performance from your engine. And they recommend replacing all your spark plug wires and your coil wire after each racing season. The two best wires they found include the Morosa Ultra 40, and at Crate Insider we don't sell those, but we do sell their other recommended item, and that is the Fast Fire Wire. And these are my favorite spark plug wires. Absolutely love these, and of course Hendren loves them too. So next we want to talk about RPM limits, and this is very important. Um, they recommend using a max maximum 6800 rev limiter chip because 604 engines go into valve float above 6800 RPM causing premature valve train wear and failure. They found that most crate engine failures are caused from excessive RPMs resulting in dropped valves, broken valve train parts, and broken pistons. So regardless of what you hear, you know, if somebody's telling you they're running over 7000 RPM, it's either crap or the, it, their tech tachometer is not right or they will soon be running over engine parts or you need to protest them because they're running aftermarket valve springs. About 95% of the engine failures that these guys see are a direct result of valve float. So they recommend keeping your RPMs in check. Um, something that they hear over and over again is that they, they say people are, people say they're using a 7,000 chip because the MSDs hit the rev limiter 200 RPMs too early. However, what they've also found is that to trust the MSD box and the MSD rev limiter chip before you trust the TAC. Um, by trusting the TAC, so many of them, they read wrong and they recommend calibrating your TAC and rev limiter on a chassis dyno if that's available to you in your area. Next, we're gonna talk about oil. Hendron recommends one of two oils for use in your crate engine. One of these is our Schaefer's, so which is a 1030 oil, and then the other is the Klotz 1040. Um, both of these are excellent oils, but there's a few things to know. Um, first of all, the Schaefer's, you can use at any time, but with the Klotz, you're gonna have to wait until your engine is broken in before you can use it. Now, if you're using any other oils outside of these, then they also strongly recommend using the Daytona One XL1 engine treatment. Now, they found in their own engine, in their house car, they gained eight horsepower and 12 foot pounds of torque by simply pouring the, this additive into their engine. And they highly suggest using this if you're gonna use another oil. You don't need this if you've got the clots, but if you're using any other oil, you wanna use that. And again, you wanna make sure that your engine is broken in and your rings are seated uh, before you start pouring this into your engine. When it comes to filters, they recommend the Wix 51061R, and that is also an item that we sell in our, in our store. A big question a lot of guys ask is, how often should I change our, my oil? And that you'll hear answers all across the board. But with Hendren, they recommend changing your oil after 100 racing laps minimum. They recommend changing it even more often if you're racing in dusty environments, because remember, fresh oil is the best oil. Moving on to spark plugs, Hendren recommends either the NGK R5724-8s or the AC Delco MR43LTS spark plugs. Now we don't sell the AC Delcos, but in Crate Insider, we do sell the NGK R5724-8s. Um, what they've found is 
that they recommend changing your spark plugs every 10 races for maximum performance and you want to gap these at 40 thousandths when using MSD type distributor or MSD type ignition systems. Now for carburetors, if you're a Hendron customer and they do your engine for you, then you can get a Hendron carburetor and they're doing their own carburetors now. But if that's not the case, then the other two carburetors they recommend would be ones from Willie's Carbs and Dino Shop or from David Smith Carburetors. And at Crate Insider, we are a dealer for both of those brands and both those guys make fantastic carburetors. Um, with that, regardless of the type of carburetor you have, or the brand, I should say, is that they recommend using Willie's Super Bowl system. They've found that this setup is it's just awesome. It ensures that you have consistent fuel, and we've done a video um, where me talking to Willie about the Super Bowl system, so you can check that out. And um, the Hendron has found is it eliminates like 99.9% .9 of all the carburetor issues that they've seen because there is no needle or seat and, and it just eliminates all of those problems. So that is available in our Crate Insider store and we can get that for, um, we, we can get that installed on your carburetor. For headers, Hendron recommends the Dynatech headers and you want to use those in conjunction with the anti-reversion mufflers that they designed. Now they used to actually produce these but after all they're not in the muffler business so now Dynatech it actually manufactures them but they are all based on Hendron's design and if your rules allow for them. And if you already have a set of the uh, BA headers um, no need to rush out um, because they are equal uh, to Dynatech on the top end power but the testing that they've done has shown that Dynatech being better a little bit on the low end. Next up, we're going to look at carburetor spacers, and there's lots of options on the market. But Hendron recommends the HVH high velocity heads 5 8 inch four hole spacer. This spacer outdoes every spacer that they've tested to date. Um, they've seen awesome low end torque increases with no loss of top end power when compared to back to back with other top of the line spacers on the market. And of course we have these in the Crate Insider store. When it comes to water pump pulleys and the fan blades, Hendron recommends using any of the Jones Racing products or KRC front drive kits along with the recommended water pumps. The Jones Racing products and KRC systems are the best, most affordable, and lightest weight that they've found. They seem to draw the least amount of power from the engine, and they recommend using the smallest racing fan that you can get away with using. Um, they like to use a two-blade fan. We've got the Hendron two-blade fan in our store, but they also highly recommend the race fan because with the race fan, you've got interchangeable blades and you can change it to run it as a two-blade fan, three-blade fan, etc. And they do recommend using two or three blades depending on your application. And if it's not possible to use um, either of these items that we've recommended, then they suggest either using a 17 inch or an 18 inch four blade fan with no more than 32 degrees of pitch. Um, they've found fan blades to be a serious horsepower and torque robbing item. All right, now let's talk about air filters and air filter bases. Traditionally, Hendron has recommended a non-oiled filter, but with R2C not being part of the picture anymore, they've finally found an oiled filter that works fantastically. This is the Walker uh, performance filtration air filter and this is by far and away the best oiled filter on the market and as for the air filter base they recommend the the crate insider flat air filter base they found that this air filter base produces the most power in their dyno testing and of course we sell both of those at crateinsider.com now here's an important side note is that they do not recommend using the alt star performance air filter they've had several engines in the past year or two that have practically bored themselves themselves from the amount of dirt that these filters have let into the engine. When it comes to valve springs, Hendron Racing Engines recommends that you check your valve springs after every race and inspect the rocker arms, valve keepers, and retainers for any signs of excessive wear. They recommend that you keep a logbook on your valve springs for quick ref reference when testing your seat pressure, and they recommend changing any valve spring that has lost five pounds of seat pressure. Now, they don't specifically mention this in their recommendations, but I do know for a fact that they, um, when it comes to pressure testers, that they have used this, actually they've used this um, when they've done teching, 
and this is the LSM Racing Products valve spring pressure tester that you can use right there on the engine. We do have a video for that. Um, at Crate Insider, we specifically order this with a 160 pound gauge because you'll find other testers that have like a 600 pound gauge, I think, and you're just not gonna get as accurate a result as when you have a gauge that's dialed in a little bit more. So like I said, they didn't specifically mention it, but if you need, if you're looking for a valve spring pressure tester, this is a really good option for you. Now, another note about valves, um, when it comes to the valve adjustments, we've, they've, they've written out some instructions in their recommendations if you need to set your own valves, but we do have a video that we've done with Hendron Racing Engines on how to set your valve lash and also how to change your valve springs. Now let's talk about fuel because it's one of the most critical items for you getting the best performance from your crate engine. Now I know it's not on here because most of these directions are really for our southeastern market or eastern market I should say. But for a fuel recommendation, if you can run methanol, run methanol. But if that's not the case, they recommend running only race gas. Now you definitely don't want to run regular pump gas because it's too unpredictable as far as ethanol content. The federal government allows oil companies to cut their fuel with up to 10% ethanol and they've seen numerous performance issues with engines running regular pump gas as well as some engine failures because they've burned the pistons because of that ethanol content. So here would be the fuels that they recommend outside of the methanol for running in your 604 crate engine. Now, first of all, run regular race gas that's non-oxygenated, and this would be any race gas that is between 95 to 105 octane. Now, in this, in this category, they recommend the Impact Sport Plus 102 octane, which is blended by the Lone Star Gas Super Gas Incorporated in Texas. And those are some great guys, and if, if you need some information on how to reach out to them, just let me know. Now, for oxygenated race gas, they recommend the Klotz CR604. Now, this was an a fuel that they developed with with clots. So Hendron Racing Engines and clots worked together to develop this fuel. And this fuel currently produces the most power and torque out of any of the oxygenated race gases on the market. It also happens to be the most stable of any of the oxygenated fuels out there and does not contain any of the banned chemicals that Neesmith doesn't allow. So it is 100% Neesmith legal. And of course, um, we sell Cradens, we sell clots fuel at Crate Insider. For the Rush Racing Series, Hendron recommends their 100, 110 spec race fuel. Now the VP crate horsepower or CHP is also a very good fuel to use and they would consider it second best. However, the CHP requires some carb modifications in order to run properly and it's not always legal to use depending on the series or the track you run at. It's a very good fuel, fuel and recommended as an alternative when it's legal to run. And as a side note, they highly recommend that you install a simple on-off valve in line from your fuel cell to your engine. They've seen several engine failures due to the fuel siphoning into the engine, either filling the oil pan with fuel and causing bearing failure, or filling the cylinders up with fuel and causing the engines to hydraulic. Next, we're talking about cold air boxes. Hendron recommends that you isolate your air cleaner from your underhood heat. It is best to seal the air cleaner base to the hood in order to only breathe the outside air temperature, because for every 100 degrees of air inlet temperature that is gained over the outside air temperature, you'll lose 10% of the engine's power. So ensuring that your engine is only breathing outside air is really critical on these crate engines. You can make your own cold air box or you can buy one that's pre-made and we do have those in the Crate Insider store. Now with thermostats, they definitely do not recommend using a thermostat in your cooling system. They've seen far too many engine killing issues because of thermostats. And this includes thermostats that were meant for racing. If, if, you're, if you have issues getting your engine warm enough under racing conditions, switch to a smaller fan blade or block off part of your radiator. Now, before racing, they recommend that you warm up your engine before any type of high RPM racing or practicing because running any engine at a high RPM with cold oil can result in oil cell starvation or oil filter failure. Now, when it comes to priming your oil system, 
if you, especially if you've got a new engine that's right out of the box. They recommend to prime it properly that you pull both valve covers off of the engine, use an engine priming tool and prime the oil system until you have oil coming out of each of the rocker arms spit holes. And you can turn the engine one quarter revolution by hand every few minutes as you are priming the system. You have to be very patient because it will take an average of 10 to 20 minutes of priming in order to get oil to all 16 rocker arms. And once the engine oil system has been primed, then you'll reinstall the valve covers and torque the valve cover bolts up to 100 inch pounds. So those are our 604 crate engine recommendations from Hendron Racing Engines. Um, you, of course, we've got links in the description here or in the comments so that you can find all of the items that we mentioned in the video on our website at CrateInsider.com. So check out CrateInsider.com for more tech videos and articles, um, some of the best products that you can find for crate engines. And if you like this video, um, hit, that, hit that like button and we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching.